Hello everyone. So today we'll start with our topic limb length and limb girth measurement. So limb length and limb girth measurement comes under the anthropometric measurements. So what is anthropometric measurement? The anthropometric measurement means it is the study of measurement of human body in terms of the dimensions of the bone, muscles and adipose tissue. So it is a systematic measurement of the physical properties of a human body where we take the data of the length and breadth of the uh, body parts and record it for our clinical practices as well as for research. So it plays an essential role in clinical practice and research where we evaluate and uh, record the variables of the human body and physical conditions of each individual or patients. So for us to efficiently record the findings or the data from our anthropometric measurements, we need to have a high quality anthropometric instruments with which we will be measuring various parts of the body as well as thorough knowledge of the anatomical landmarks where we will be placing the measurement tools for recording and measurements. We as a physical therapist also should be highly skilled to use and observe the measurements. There should be a sufficient experience in using the established measurement uh, procedures and we should be revising the validity and reliability of the equipments or measuring tools. So these are some of the criteria or principles we need to follow for measurements of the human body of the patient. So what are the measurements that we can take? What can be measured by using anthropometric tools? We can measure the limb length which is very important for us physical therapists so that we can see the alteration or differences in the patient's body parts or the limb. Another measurement that we can take is for edema and localized swelling. So it can be in any part of the body. Edema means there is a fluid collection uh, in the tissues or around the tissues and uh, localized swelling could be because of inflammation or any kind of other conditions. Another measurement that we can take is for joint. Commonly the joint goes for enlargement because of the joint effusion that is the collection of fluid in the joint spaces. For example, the swelling caused by the excess fluid that is accumulated inside the knee joint space so due to which the knee one side or the inflamed knee will look larger than the other knee. Other measurements we can take is for muscular changes. So the muscles will go for hypertrophy or atrophy. So hypertrophy means enlargement in the muscle uh, bulk or muscle belly whereas atrophy means reduction in the muscle belly or muscle fibers. The differences of uh, muscle growth or muscle loss can be measured by anthropometric measurements. Outcome of the surgical procedures also can be re recorded by using these tools. For example, if the patient had undergone a hip surgery or you can see in the picture here the internal fixation of the femur uh, because of the femur fracture. Now because of this condition the a fractured limb or the fractured bone could increase in size compared to the normal side or decrease in size. This can be recorded measuring the limb length. Next is skin fold thickness also can be measured by using this uh, measurement tools. So skin fold thickness is mainly used uh, to track the progress during weight loss programs. So coming to measurement tools, so what are the few measurement tools that we can discuss here for anthropometric measurements? First one is called as stadiometer. The stadiometer is used mainly for measurement of the height. So it is used in clinical evaluation, especially after, uh, for example, vertebral fracture. 
So post vertebral fracture, we can measure whether there is any reduction or there is a increase in the height. Another type of instrument that can be used is a soft metric tape or also called as measuring tape. So this is a very simple tool, uh, very easily available. So this is mainly used to measure the length and girth of the limbs uh, or any body part. So skin fold caliper is the tool which is used for measuring the skin fold thickness. So if we want to estimate the total amount of body fat, four skin folds should be measured. Number one, the bicep skin fold which can be measured in the middle part of the upper arm. Next one is the tricep skin fold which can be taken at the back side of the middle upper arm and uh, the subscapular skin fold which is under the lowest point of the shoulder blade or the inferior angle of the scapula. The fourth one is the suprailiac skin fold that is on the iliac crest just above the iliac crest or upper bone of the hip. So if we take this four skin fold measurements we can estimate the total amount of the body fat. Next type of instrument is called as sliding calibers. This is designed to determine the dimensions of the head or the nasal height or width. It also can be used to measure the distance between the inner and outer eye corners. It can be used to measure the lower jaw height, hand width or foot width etc. Thoracometer is also one type of sliding caliper which can be used uh, to measure the length of the foot or width of the foot. This device consists of an aluminium square section rod fitted on both sides with a millimeter scale measuring from 0 to 400 millimeter. The other caliper is called as spreading caliper. This is mainly used to measure the head circumference. The last one which we will discuss here is the volumeter. The volumeter is designed to objectively measure volume of the body part by using the fluid displacement method. As you can see here in the picture, the limb is immersed inside the volumeter because of which the, um, some amount of fluid will be uh, coming out of this volumeter inside the jar. So this fluid can be measured to record the limb girth. Now we will be thoroughly discussing how we can measure the limb length of the lower limb. So before understanding how to measure the lower limb length, we have to understand first the limb length discrepancy. So what is limb length discrepancy? It is also called as anisomalia. The limb length discrepancy is a condition in which commonly the paired lower extremity limbs have a noticeably unequal length. So you can see in the picture here one limb is shorter than the other limb. So there is a significant limb length discrepancy here. So if a, a physician finds that there is more than 1.5 to 2 centimeter of difference between two limbs then it is recommended for further evaluation and also advice for the correction of this limb length discrepancy and in most cases the bones that are affected by limb length discrepancy are the femur that is the thigh bone and the tibia which is the shin bone. Now let us classify this limb length discrepancy into true limb length discrepancy and functional limb length discrepancy. So what do we mean by true limb length discrepancies? So if there is an actual bony asymmetry, then we will call it as true limb length discrepancy. For example, if the femur of one side is shorter than the femur of the other side, it is called as true limb length discrepancy because there is a difference in the length of the bone. Or other example could be the length of the tibia on one side is longer or shorter than the length of the tibia of the other side. Some of the causes for true limb length discrepancies could be a previous injury to the bone, for example, fracture of the bone. 
so after fracture if the bone heals in a certain position then it can cause limb length discrepancy if there is any trauma to the epiphyseal end plate prior to skeletal maturity it also can cause abnormal growth on one side causing limb length discrepancy any bone infection could be the cause for limb length discrepancy or any kind of bone diseases and malignancies and one of the most common and important cause for true limb length discrepancy is arthroplasty so arthroplasty means the replacement of the joint by artificial substance as you can see in the picture here the hip joint has been replaced by artificial substance and it is called as hip arthroplasty next type of uh, limb length discrepancy is functional limb length discrepancy so as the name suggests it is not because of the shortening of the bone but it is because of the shortening of the soft tissues or because of the stiffness of the joints and contractures of the joints it also could be because of the ligamentous laxity it could be because of the malalignment of the bones or the structures for example here you can see in the picture there is a scoliosis and also there is a lateral tilting of the pelvis or lateral bending of the pelvis these are some of the axial malalignments which can cause limb length discrepancies low back pain scoliosis are some of the malalignments scoliosis means there is a lateral shift of the spine or the vertebral column because of which there will be lateral tilting of the pelvis bone causing one side of the hip joint to raise upward and the other side of the hip joint to be depressed downward because of which one side of the lower limb will be looking longer than the other side another cause for functional limb length discrepancy could be altered foot biomechanics such as excessive ankle pronation so these were some of the causes for functional limb length discrepancies and uh, true limb length discrepancies so i hope you understood clearly what are the causes for functional limb length discrepancy and true limb length discrepancies so true limb, limb length discrepancy means there will be alteration in the bone or the structure of the bone for example simple example is fracture of the bone after fracture the bone may heal in a shortened position or a lengthened position due to which there may be limb length discrepancy whereas in functional limb length discrepancies the cause for the shortening of the lower limb is not because of the bone fracture but it is because of the shortening of soft tissues for example muscles uh, you can take example as an adductor muscle if it goes for tightness on one side it may cause more adduction of the hip joint on one side causing the pelvis to tilt on the other side due to which there will be limb length discrepancy so in today's lecture we have uh, discussed about the anthropometric measurements where we have discussed few tools uh, what are the measurements that can be measured and also we have discussed the type of limb length discrepancies so i would like you all to uh, fill up the uh, it is mandatory for everyone to fill up the assignments which I'll be sharing through Teams. Attendance will be given based on the uh, assignments which will be submitted within the time frame. If you are unable to submit the uh, assignments within the time frame, I will not be able to give attendance for that particular student. So if there's any questions from this lecture, you may contact me through Teams or through WhatsApp. Thank you.